You know, I've been fascinated with the idea of spinning fiber for socks. I love knitting socks and I'd love to try spinning all natural fibers to knit a pair of socks out of. And by that I mean no nylon. <laughs> so I picked up a Romney mohair blend, which is Romney wool from a sheep mixed with mohair uh, off of a goat <laughs> blended together. And I've been reading recently about mohair and how it could potentially, sounds like, be a decent replacement for nylon in our fiber blends. So I thought I would try out a spin uh, with the intention that the yarn will create socks. <laughs> so let's do it. I, I have the fiber. I'm ready to go. I think I have a good idea of what I want to do. Let's see how this goes spinning yarn for socks out of all natural fibers. So the fiber is a wool mohair blend. I picked up 8.1 ounces and this is from the Pines Farm, which oddly enough is not too far from where I live. And it's this beautiful orange and yellow mixture of color. To prep the fiber, I ran it through my combs twice. So I'm using these hand combs that Michael made for me. And uh, I'm just going to load the fiber on, comb it onto the other comb, then comb it back to this comb. And then after combing, I'm going to run it through the hand carters as well. Doing the same thing, loading on to the hand carters, uh, brushing it over, brushing it back. And then I'll take the fiber off the hand carts into a roll egg.
After some trial spins with two ply and three ply, I decided to go with a three ply yarn. So I weighed out one ounce for each bobbin. So I'm going to spin one ounce of fiber onto three bobbins for three ounces total and then ply those three singles together. After a couple days of spinning, I had all three of my singles ready to ply. Uh, and you can see my makeshift Lazy Kate here using a basket, some straight knitting needles, and some clothespins. It seems to work okay, so I roll with it.
these are my samples uh, that I spun up just, uh, let's see, what did I do? Like maybe one roll leg um, for my samples. So I did these two first, which I think you can tell they were completed about the same time because they look pretty similar. And I think you can agree with me that this does not look like yarn someone would want to work with. <laughs> At least not for making socks that you want to be functional and hard wearing. You know, maybe this is a style of art yarn. Not that I make art yarn, but yeah, it doesn't resemble yarn that I would want to work with. So, and of course, there is a dog hair right there. Not that it matters. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is a two ply. I was trying to compare a two ply to a three ply. And, you know, honestly, I wasn't sure if, see, when I put tension on this, it actually looks fine. But then when you let it loose, it goes all curly. So I thought, well, maybe that's just how mohair is, maybe. You know, a, a yarn like this isn't possible, but you can see it is possible. So, <laughs> um, so I wasn't happy with this, and I went and read uh, some of the the goat issue of the Ply magazine. I read some articles online. I watched some videos, and I decided, okay, yeah, 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 uh, sock yarn that I want to work with out of this blend is possible. So, I tried it again. And this is my third sample, and you can see it does look like stable yarn that's not separating and being all curly. So I don't know what I did here. Honestly, I would not be surprised at all if I just forgot whether I was spinning clockwise or counterclockwise and just spun it the wrong way. That is entirely possible. Uh, so I'm glad I did a third sample and you can see it just it looks fantastic uh this is a three ply i did a chain ply so i just spun a singles and uh did a andean ply from my hand and worked out a chain ply just to see what a three ply would look like and i was really happy with it so i went ahead and <laughs> You know prepped up all the fiber as you know and created all of these row lags and spun them all up no i didn't spin them all up because there's a bunch over there so i weighed out um three ounces and spun one ounce on each bobbin and did a traditional three ply which is my first time doing a traditional three ply and i'm very happy with the result so um, by combing and carting the fibers, um, in addition to this fiber I bought already prepped, I did blend the colors more, which you would expect. And I wasn't necessarily trying to do that. Um, I like having color variation in the yarn. Um, I wasn't trying to make a solid. Uh, so it wasn't about the color, it was about the yarn but uh, these oranges and yellows I was gonna be happy with however this blended out so I wasn't really concerned with um, you know making sure I had orange roll eggs and yellow roll eggs and blended roll eggs. I was not at all paying attention to color I was paying attention to the fibers and how they were behaving so that's where all the focus went and yeah, I'm super happy with this yarn. I mean, that is like a great shot there with the, cam with the camera focusing. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with this. So this is a little shy of three ounces. This is um, 2.82 ounces, which is roughly 80 grams. And I usually don't use a full you know, a, a commercial sock weight yarn skein that I would buy of 100 grams, you know, roughly 400 yards. Um, I don't use a full 
uh, four ounce skein to make a pair of socks. So this being uh, 80 grams, uh, 2.82 ounces, I think this is going to work out. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the yardage though. It's only 182 yards. I say only, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see, but I did, of course I did the math on the grist and it's 1,029 yards per pound, which on that scale is a DK weight yarn. And I don't want DK weight. I want fingering weight, but see, I took some of these strands and I put them on my wraps per inch tool and it measures up like a fingering weight yarn, like 14 to 15 wraps per inch. So it seems like a fingering weight, but in the weight, it seems like a DK yarn. So I'm not sure. I am not sure at all. So I'm gonna cast on and I anticipate that I may have to rip out, go back, start over. I maybe have too many stitches, too few stitches. I, Cause I'm really not sure if I'm working with a fingering weight yarn or DK. So uh, this is gonna be an unplanned part of the project here that we're going to be experimenting with, but I think that'll be okay. Um, I'm really happy with how the yarn turned out. Maybe I put a little bit too much twist in the ply. Um, here's a little curly cue you can see. So maybe, you know, I was trying to get a thinner yarn than this. So I may have overplied just a little bit, as you can see with this curly cue. So we'll see how that works out in the yarn. We'll see how it feels in the fabric. Um, I have plenty more fiber to work with. So, um, yeah, we'll see where this goes. So I did end up starting and ripping out this sock, I think three times. So here you're seeing my third attempt at starting this sock. I'm not following a typical pattern that I would use to knit socks. I did modify it a little bit, but decided to ultimately stick with a plain vanilla sock, just stockinette stitch throughout so that I could easily monitor the wear and tear on the sock and the individual stitches. Despite starting this project over multiple times, I actually finished this pair of socks in less than a week, uh, just a few days. And so I was able to give the socks a nice soak and set them outside on the back porch to dry in the somewhat warm and sunny weather. And in one of these pictures, you can see Marjorie in the background enjoying a good roll in our green, green grass that I can't get to stop growing here in Washington. And here they are all finished. My socks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, um, a couple of things. First of all, um, I knit these socks shorter than intended because um, this is all I have left is, um, is this much yarn. So I thought I was going to get kind of full size socks with a nice big leg, but I did not have enough yardage for that. But that's okay. I also like shorter socks. Um, I did wear these socks today, so excuse the, uh, dog hair, <laughs> uh, but I need to run this experiment of actually wearing these socks and seeing how the fabric holds up. Uh, and so I've started that, um, experiment now, but, um, yeah, the socks are finished. So I knit them toe up, which is not my usual method. Uh, but I watched um, 
uh, I've watched several podcasts and videos on YouTube, and one of them, uh, created by My Wool Mitten, who's in Michigan, uh, she talked about a method where uh, she likes to knit her socks toe up, and if you bind off in a larger needle size, um, you can get a nice uh, bind off edge up here. And I don't like knitting toe up because I have so many issues with the bind off. Everything else is great, it's that I have issues at the very end here. So I thought I'd give that method a try. So on this sock, um, so I knit the whole thing using US size zero needles, and then I bound off in US size five needles on both socks. But on this one, I bound off in pattern, knit pearl, knit pearl. And so the top edge looks a little wavy when you glance at it, but it's stretchy, doesn't seem to flare out which is nice. And then this one I thought, well, this looks not as clean as I remember it looking in her video. So here I bound off, did the same thing in larger needles, but I did it all in knit stitches and it looks more tidy from the top view. Um, little neat comparison here. Uh, and it's also stretchy, doesn't seem to be maybe maybe flaring i don't know it's so hard to tell but <laughs> anyway so i'm um comparing that bind off as well but it did work quite nicely using a larger needle size to do that bind off so i think i will be more open to knitting my socks toe up now if i do that because it, it looks pretty nice um, but yeah, I'm super happy with how these socks turned out. Uh, like I said, I wore these today at work and my feet feel fine. I do not feel any kind of allergy irritation, which I was a little worried about. Um, but none of that, they feel, they feel soft to the touch. They're comfy, cozy. Um, the yarn is thicker than a fingering weight, so not quite the gauge I usually would knit socks at. I like a fingering weight sock, um, but all in all they're comfy, they fit inside my shoes, all that good stuff. I did add a tiny bit of a gusset in here where I increased a few stitches before doing the short row heel and then decreased them off up here. And I really like doing that because I think I just need a little bit of extra room when I do a short row heel. And um, so I really like that method and it gives a cute little um, shape here. I'm trying to find a good example. But it, it just looks like I've added a few arches to the sock and I think it looks kind of fun. But the, the colors are great. Um, I do have a little bit of like neppy fluffs here of the mohair, but not a lot. Of course, there's dog hair in here. <laughs> uh, I think I uh, blended all the fibers together pretty well beyond the prep. Because um, I, I bought this already prepped, um, the fiber, but I, I re-prepped it into... Uh, Rolex because it was easier to spin and I think it also blended the fibers together really nicely so I'm hoping after all of that that this that, that this pair of socks will last so I'm going to be wearing them like I normally wear socks just in my tennis shoes you know going to work walking around stores um, in sandals, out in the garden, uh, in boots, on hikes. I'm going to, you know, try all the things, see how it wears. Um, so I'm going to see how it hold up, holds up to wear. I'm also going to run an experiment with washing because my last pair of hand spun socks shrunk. And I believe it's because of washing them in the machine. 
so I don't really want to lose another pair of socks to the washing machine, so I'm afraid to do it. But I might run that experiment after I see how these wear and tear with normal use. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'm really happy. Um, I spun a Romney mohair three ply yarn for socks, and at this point, I couldn't be happier. Thank you for joining me on this spinning and knitting adventure. If you like seeing videos like this on the channel, let me know in the comments down below and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, I'd really like to know what kind of other crafting journeys you would like to see on this channel. So share a comment down below. Let me know what you're interested in and I'll see you around.